Um, I am a United, an ordained United Methodist pastor, but I have a very ecumenical background, baptized in that Lutheran church. And I've been, anyway, I'm now attending the, Presby or the yeah, Presbyterian church in Ilion. I am a Methbyterian. <laughs> anyway, um, would you join us in the first and third verses of Precious Lord, Take, take My Hand? Precious Lord, take my hand. I am tired, I am weak. Through the storms of the night. Take the light, take my hand, precious Lord, take me home. When the darkness appears, the night draws near, and the day is past and gone. Blessed be the Holy Trinity. One God, God of manna, God of miracles, God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when we the our ways which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Our hymn is number 870. We praise you, O God. We praise you, O God, and we deem a creator when we wait for day to shout we bring. We will for you. We we will not forsake us, and we 
The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Blessed be God, the source of all light, the world of salvation. Blessed be God, the world of salvation. Will you pray with me? O oh God of creation, eternal majesty, you preside over land and sea, sunshine and storm. By your strength, pilot us. By your power, preserve us. By your wisdom, instruct us. And by your hand, protect us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from Job chapter 28, 38, excuse me. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? Or what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band and prescribed bounds for it? and set bars and doors, and said, thus far shall you come and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stopped. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our Psalm is Psalm 107. We'll read this responsively, starting with the antiphon. You still the storm and silence the, the waves, waves of, of the, the sea. sea. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good, for God's mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord proclaim that God redeemed them from the hand of the foe. Gathering them in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some went down to the sea in ships, plying their trade in deep waters. You still the, the storm. storm and silence the waves of the sea. They beheld the works of the Lord, God's wonderful works in the deep. And God spoke, and a stormy wind arose, which tossed high the waves of the sea. They mounted up to the heavens and descended to the depths. Their souls melted away in their peril. They staggered and reeled like drunkards, and all their skill was to no avail. Then in their trouble, they cried to the Lord, and you delivered them from their distress. You still the storm to a whisper and silence the waves of the sea. You still the storm and silence the waves of the sea. <clears throat> then were they glad when it grew calm, when you guided them to the harbor they desired. Let them give thanks to you, Lord, for your steadfast love and your wonderful works for all the people. Let them exalt you in the assembly of the people. <clears throat> in the council of the elders, let them sing hallelujah. You still the storm and silence the waves of the sea. Our second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 6. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance and afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments. Riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, 
knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see, we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your hearts also. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please rise. Our gospel reading this morning is from the gospel according to Mark, chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. When evening had come, Jesus said to the disciples, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took with him, took him with them in a boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. We're in crisis and we don't know what to do. We could die and no one cares. And where is Jesus? Asleep on a cushion in the boat. Wake up, Jesus. Do something before we die in this storm. Most of these men were fishermen. They knew the Sea of Galilee, the sudden storms that blew up, and I'm sure they had handled this before. But in the short time that they had followed Jesus, they had seen him. They had seen him heal people and teach lessons and parables, and Jesus had named them as the Twelve. They expected him to do something special, to save them from the storm. And he did so with three simple words, peace, be still. But then he added for the disciples, why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? I think Jesus could ask these same questions of us, people who call themselves Christians. Politicians, the media, economists, and scientists work very hard to keep us afraid. We are told that immigrants are taking our jobs. We are told by both political parties that the other party is destroying the country. We are told by scientists that global warming and climate change are leading to our imminent destruction. We are encouraged to buy guns 
security systems, property cameras to protect ourselves and loved ones from those very dangerous criminals that stalk our streets. We see church attendance falling and churches closing, and we are afraid for the spiritual well-being of ourselves and future generations. Phobias are rampant. We are afraid of death, of bugs and germs, and people who are not like us, and poverty and disease. Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? To the Corinthian church, a church plagued by troubles and dissension, Paul declared, now is the acceptable time. Now is the acceptable time to tell the truth in love and affection. Do not be afraid. Do not give in to the conspiracies, to fear mongers, to the deniers, to the anger and hatred and fear that that engenders. Look at the situation with open eyes, open minds, and open hearts. In Psalm 207, or 107 rather, we read the parallel story to the gospel reading. The sea is raging and the sailors are afraid. They mounted up to heaven. They went down to the depths. Their courage melted away in their calamity. They reeled and staggered like drunkards and were, met and were at their wits end. They cried to the Lord in their trouble and he brought them out from their distress. When we're in danger, when we're afraid, we need to turn to God. Not to fear, nor to fellow human beings, nor politicians, nor the military. The prophet Isaiah said, woe to those who rely on horses, who trust in chariots because they are many, and in horsemen because they are very strong. But do not look to the Holy One of Israel or consult the Lord. It's an age old problem that we forget to turn to God when we're really in trouble. We should trust in God, pray and place our fears in God's control. But we cannot expect God to fix everything for us, to pull us out of every pickle we get ourselves into. God gave us brains and hearts and hands and feet and enough guidance in the life and teachings of Jesus to show us how to solve our ills today. We do not have enough time this morning to discuss all of the immediate issues that we face. The one that is most on my mind today, and I suspect on many of yours, as we sit here fanning ourselves, is climate crisis. In the US, in this past week alone, the weather has been bizarre to say the least. Prolonged heat waves scorching the Northeast, even before the first day of summer. Wildfires blazing in Mexico long before the normal fire season. Tropical storms are drenching the Texas Gulf Coast. A snow system sent temperatures plunging and dropped a foot of snow in the Rocky Mountains, followed by predictions of 90 degrees this week in the Rockies. Outside the US, deadly heat in both Italy and India, and I'm sure many other places have made the news. Meanwhile, an internet furor arose when the Department of Energy recommended that AC thermostats be set at 78 degrees when you're at home. This will save money in your power bill and will help prevent grid shutdown during the expected heat this summer. People were furious, refusing to give up what is their comfort and speaking only for myself, I find that air conditioning is always too cold in grocery stores, restaurants, public gathering places. I have to carry a sweater with me all summer. 
I'm happy to have air conditioning, but it is rarely set below 75. Climate change is real. The globe is heating up and it is causing a crisis that most of us seem to ignore. Changing our light bulbs is barely a drop in the bucket. I drive to Boston, to the Boston area, about every six weeks to visit my son. My car is older and not up to 2024 efficiency standards. I could easily take the train, which would save me money, be more efficient use of fuel, and not terribly inconvenient at either end of the train. But I don't do it because I don't like Amtrak's schedule. It doesn't really fit with what I want to do. So I drive my old clunker using up gas that is totally unnecessary. This is a small matter and the savings for the environment are minute. But I have to admit that I think of my own comfort before I consider the well-being of God's creation. Are you aware that ELCA has a statement on the environment, what the church believes and should be doing? It's called Caring for Creation, Vision, Hope, and Justice. Every mainline Protestant denomination has a similar statement, as do the Roman Catholic Church and Islam. If we wish to turn to God for help in this crisis, we have guidance from the leaders of the church that we attend. These statements generally agree that it's God's creation, not ours, to use as we wish. We are connected to each other and to all of creation, and to God. God's response to Job and to his four friends who gave him such bad advice is that God alone is responsible, is responsible for this amazing creation and the lack of human participation in its origins. Where were you, God says, when I laid the foundations of the earth? Or who shut, the, who shut the sea with doors and thus and said, thus far shall you come and no farther, and here shall your waves be stopped. Not only did we not participate in the creation, we humans have defied God's boundaries for the seas by building levees so that more people can have ocean and river views. We build dams for electrical power and flood control. We destroy marshlands and animal habitats for shopping malls that quickly become obsolete. I was introduced to the environmental crisis when I was in seminary in 1988. We were assigned to read Bill McKibben's The End of Nature when it appeared in the New, York, New Yorker magazine. In essence, McKibben said that humans have taken over nature. We control the water, the forests, fields, and animals. We have not yet learned to control the weather, but we certainly have had a negative effect on the climate. When I visited my sister in Washington State a few years ago, I was both delighted and disturbed to see that the lumber industry was reforesting the whole area that they had cut down. I was delighted that the trees were being replaced for the many benefits trees offer. They provide oxygen, they filter out harmful gases, they shelter animals and provide energy. But I was disturbed because when they reforest, they plant the trees in nice, even rows for easy harvesting the next time around. Wild forests are becoming rare. Future generations will not know the beauty of old growth forests. They will think that forests grow in neat straight lines. Yes, Genesis 1, 26 
the climax of creation, God gives dominion to humans. Then God said, let us make humans in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humans in his image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. God created them. But a mere five chapters later, the Lord saw that the wickedness of humans was great in the earth and that every inclination of the thoughts of their hearts was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made humans on the earth and it grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out from the earth the humans I have created, people together with animals and creeping things and the birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. Very early on, humans made a mess of things, and God regretted creating us. But as so often happens in Scripture, God relented and saved eight humans. Noah, who found favor with the Lord, and his wife, three sons, and their wives. All of these were saved along with the animals on the ark. But after the flood waters subsided, no sooner had Noah stepped foot on the land than he got drunk and started the whole human race on a path of destruction once again. We've been heading down a slippery slope ever since. And lest we begin to think that human beings are too important for God to obliterate, I recently read that if all human beings were to disappear from the earth, the earth would not only survive, what would restore itself to its natural God-created state. If all insects were to disappear from the earth, it would be the earth destruction. Insects are essential to the ecology of all things. Bugs are more important than humans. The hope for the earth, for the balance of nature, is for us to remember that while God gave humans dominion, God didn't give us free reign to destroy the earth. The words of Psalm 24 remind us, the earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it, for he has founded it on the seas and established it on the rivers. God has given us minds and hearts and bodies to tend creation. It is within our God-given power to restore the earth, but it comes at a cost. We must seek truth. In Paul's words to the Thessalonian church, test everything, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. In other words, don't ex accept what you hear on blind faith. Do some research, seek truth. Our convenience and comfort must take second place to God's glorious creation. It's not easy to surrender air conditioning in a heat wave, but to set it at 78 is not too great a sacrifice for the good of all creation. As individuals, we won't make a dent in the crisis. As a community of communities working together around the world, we can change the crisis together. I chose only one crisis we're facing to talk about today. The other crises of economic, social, political, moral, and spiritual issues are rampant. But the, the Bible speaks to every crisis we face, not directly. 
I don't think the Bible knew much about artificial intelligence, but the general principles are there in scripture, giving us the words of Jesus and his actions for us to follow. And the Holy Spirit will see us through if only we would listen. If we work together in all things, we cannot think only of ourselves, but of the whole creation and the good of all people. But most importantly, we must love. Love God and God's creation. Love ourselves and our neighbors and love our enemies and pray constantly. Amen. Our hymn is number 763, My Life Flows On in Endless Song. <laughs> My life goes on in endless song above her lamentation. I catch the sweet that far off him, but it's a new creation. No more shame in our strong. in my soul, how can I keep from singing? Storm and shake, I am most calm, I'll be that rock I'm clinging. Since I'm first against the Lord of them and earth, how can I keep from facing? What the earth? Walking since in Christ is Lord of heaven, now can I keep from sin. The peace of Christ makes fresh my heart, a fountain ever springing. All things are mine since I am his, how can I keep from singing? Will you join me in the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We come before the throne, God, to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. Equip your faithful people to approach this world with a sense of wonder. Make your church a safe place to, to explore big questions, troubling doubts, and honest statements. Humble our hearts to repent of all the ways that communities of faith have inflicted pain or tra drama. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. You spoke creation and to order from the chaos of the swirling deep. May your name be praised by rivers and seas, wetlands and waterfalls. Secure clean water for all people and protect water sources from contamination or exploitation. Merciful God, receive, receive our, prayer. our prayer. Amid whir whirlwinds of division, violence, and conflict, remind us again that you are as steadfast as the foundations of the earth. Rejuvenate peacemakers, advocates, and community organizers when they feel weary in their work, especially merciful God, receive our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, deliver your people from their distress, O oh God. We lift before you all who are sick or struggling. And we especially name before you this morning, Ty, Sue, Peter, Sheila, Risley, Donna, Levi, John, Jeff, Jason, Michelle, Linda and Neil, Gary, Richard, Michael, Barbara and Irene, Leah and Charlie, Asher, Ginger, Jim and Judy, Alice, Gail, Rosemary, Lucille, Jeannie, Bob, and George, and those we name in our hearts at this time or at loud before you. Grant consolation and peace to all who live with chronic terminal or persistent illness in times of affliction or hardship. Sustain us, Lord, in faith and keep us looking towards you to trust you in all things. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Enfold all travelers with your protection. Bless the comings and goings of this assembly as we travel for leisure of our work. Let all journeys be met with hospitality on the way and let community members return with to us with this celebration. Merciful God, receive our receive prayer. Our prayer. Here, other intercessions may be offered. Lord, we thank you for the 
children in faith lives and Wallace older people. We just give you praise as we see you leading us and we see you guiding us and we see each of us growing in our faith and our love toward you and our love to one another. We ask you to be with especially these people during the time in July and August when we will not be meeting. But Lord, let your spirit grow in their lives and in my life and all of us. And we just give you praise one more time. And then we will meet again in September. In Jesus' name we do pray, most of all God. Receive our prayer. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation for all of the redeemed of the Lord. Join together with the great cloud of witness. We give thanks for your steadfast love and your wonderful works. Merciful God. Receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. The power of the Spirit. I receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through Amen. Uh, I mean, through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord Jesus be with you all. And also with you. Pardon? Oh. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, and in our morning our song shall rise to be. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Let us pray. Abiding God, under the cover of darkness you bring forth life. Nourish us with the earth's bounty, that we may freely share the gifts you have first given us through the one who gives his life for the world, Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. Amen. Let's join in the words of Jesus as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Our hymn is number 830, How Marvelous God's Greatness. <laughs> Each tiny flower that wings first for high is day with the mighty mountain passes, his majesty proclaim the many steeple shelter for his own. Let not that be our bounty to God's almighty throne. The ocean's vast abysses give one great song record, but he mysterious counsels and mercies of the Lord. The icy waves of winter are coming on the strand, and this chill stream is guided by God's gracious hand. A story of singing through all the white strip sky. Oh, God's majestic temple, and now his courts on high. Within these outer chambers, such a glory gilds the night. Which transcendent brightness is God's eternal light. Please be seated. Church announcements are the congregational meeting is set for June 30th following worship. Please plan to attend. That would be next Sunday. Faith Alive will be taking a break for the summer to thanks to all of you who have supported this program and attended. The next Women of Faith Bible Study will be Tuesday, June 25th on Zoom at 7 p.m. The subject we will discuss is Life is like a Swiss cheese, like Swiss cheese. Sounds interesting. There will be a highway cleanup on Saturday, July 13th at 9 a.m. The food focus for June is condiments. And Bible study will be on Thursday at 10 a.m. in the fellowship hall. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? Thank you for being here. Yes. My pleasure. And where is God happening in your life this week? Awesome. I have a um, company from New Jersey, a cousin and uh, a friend of hers, and we had a really good time showing them around the area and um, reminiscing about it. So, good fun again. I have to put in a plug for where I live. A year ago, I moved to Sunset Wood in New Hartford. It's a retirement community. Um, 
absolutely independent. We can come and go as we please and do what we want. But I have found community there that I have never found elsewhere. And this week we have spent almost every night sitting out on the patio where there is a slight breeze. And we have gotten to know each other this week because of the heat. So I thank God for the heat in some ways. Other ways I hate it. <laughs> but it, it does draw the community together. No, it was too cloudy. I'm sure it was. Yeah, we also have a rooftop deck, which nobody sits in in the, sun, in the daylight because it was too, it's too hot. But there were several of us up there looking for the strawberry moon that was it behind the clouds. Any other God happenings? Keep your eyes and ears open. They happen all around us all the time. Thank God. If there's no other sharing, let us join in singing our heaven is singing for joy. Heaven is singing for joy. For in your life and mine is shining the glory of God. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace, love, and joy of Jesus Christ. You are the body of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.